Hello everyone, Nate the Great Reviews is back with another one. So, I just watched Snake Eyes. I have been wanting to see this since it came out in theaters. I didn't get to see it in theaters. But I got to watch it on my streaming service. And bro, all I have been seeing is negative, negative, and negative things about this movie. No one, no reviewers, like my favorite reviewers like Jeremy Johns, John Campia, Chris Duckman didn't review this, but... All my favorite reviewers are just bashing this movie so bad. So I didn't get to see the movie for a while. I watched the reviews, which I usually don't watch until after the movie because I like to make it my own mind. But even though they didn't like it, I didn't let it bug me. And I went into it with an open mind. And dude, this is fucking hands down literally in my top three movies of 2021. Not even joking. Or at least top five. I'd say top five, not top three. But still. And I watch a lot of movies. Like, this was... I really, really like this. I understand on why people, like, fans of the G.I. Joe lore in the comics aren't happy with the way they did Snake Eyes in this. Because they, they kind of... There's a twist in the middle that kind of portrays him as the bad guy so you end up rooting for storm shadow kind of but for me i was still rooting for snake eyes because i still wanted him even though storm shadow took him in and comforted him and all this i knew snake i i i knew snake eyes was still gonna do whatever he had to do to find the guy who killed his dad at least find him and I, I could tell by his character, like, he would just, he would go to, like, unlimited lengths to just do whatever he had to do to find the guy. And Storm Shadow takes Snake Eyes and he brings him into the clan and Snake Eyes just ends up basically backstabbing him. But the way that they wrote it, everyone, everyone on YouTube was saying that Snake Eyes is the bad guy in this. I wouldn't particularly say that because near the end of the movie... There's a couple of scenes of dialogue and they literally say, like, they all agree with each other and that they've all done bad things and they're willing to move on. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't think a Snake Eyes is a bad guy. I just think that he did what he had to do. And everyone, like, a lot of fans hated this movie just because of that little, that little twist because they thought it completely screwed up the character. But the way they executed it, I thought was fucking awesome. The cinematography in this is awesome. And every, the other complaint from everyone, especially John Campia, is the shaky cam. So there is shaky cam in this. But go watch these guys' reviews. They're literally, they blow it out of proportion so bad. And they literally say, I can't see anything on screen, blah, blah, blah. I can't see who's punching who. If you're sitting there and actually watching the movie, you can see who's hitting who. I don't know if you guys are blind, but, like, this is shot pretty good. My only complaint wasn't the shaky cam, because when there was shaky cam, it completely suited the style of the movie. And it wasn't bad shaky cam. It was, it was like, in the middle. It wasn't, like, over the top. Like, it was, like, hurting your eyeballs. You could see what was going on. My only complaint about the action scenes... Sometimes there's a bit too dark, and there's a bit too many cutaways, and I think it really would have benefited if they didn't use so many cuts, but at the same time, you could see what was going on. And you gotta remember, this is a PG movie, so every time they... There is a couple of scenes where someone gets stabbed and they don't cut away, but you gotta think of all... When they're fighting 30 people at once, and they're stabbing all of these guys... They got to do quick cuts because they can't show all of them getting stabbed because it's like PG. They can show like one or two guys getting stabbed and that's it. So there's not like blood or anything, but that's not what I expect from a G.I. Joe movie. But like I said, the cinematography in this was awesome. The, the set pieces in this were really, really just beautiful to look at. And the acting between Henry Golding and Storm Shadow... And Henry Golding is the guy that plays Snake Eyes, obviously. But the way that him and Storm Shadow bounce off each other, fucking mwah, 
It's like chef's kiss. It's 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 so good. Like I could want I want to I I want them to do a sequel to this so bad. So the budget of this movie was 88 million. I looked it up before I did the review. And they only made 35 million at the box office. They almost lost 60 million dollars. So let's hope that uh I think it's because of the pandemic too which isn't helping. But let's hope they make a sequel because the way this movie ends, ah, oh, I really want them to make a sequel. The beginning of the movie was probably my favorite like when they meet each other and when Snake Eyes rescues him and they get into the they get into all the shit with the yakuza and everything. Oh man, it's so good. I I loved it. I would definitely watch this movie again. No complaints other than there's a bit too many quick cuts and like I said it was a bit dark. But other than that, the and the dialogue for every character is so good. The other G.I. Joe movies just felt like they just felt like cartoons. Like it was just one liners here and there. They had no character to them. And that's the other thing that this movie does not get enough recognition for. They really flesh out these characters. Like really well. So when shit goes down, you really care. The other G.I. Joe movies were more of like a... Like a, the other G.I. Joe movies were more of like a popcorn movie. Like, you could just sit down and watch it. Just dumbass explosions, stupid plot. Like, it really was just a, a movie just to sit down and kill some time. This, on the other hand, I was and wasn't expecting that because the trailer kind of portrayed as... A bit of both to me, but this movie just takes so much time fleshing out the relationship between him and Storm Shadow, and it takes so much time just fleshing out Snake Eyes as a character, and the relationship with his dad. And the, one of my actually favorite scenes in this movie, when it comes to like origin movies, there's always like a training sequence or something, and they gotta do a test and pass a test. Well, Snake Eyes has to do that, and it's three different tests. But, it's just super fun to watch, because it's not, like, a generic, like, I don't know, break a board or something. He has to do some fucking really, really cool martial arts samurai stuff. I'm not gonna spoil it if you guys haven't seen the movie. But, I thought the way they did the train sequences were so cool. I really, really, really liked it. I even rewinded it and watched it again. I thought it was awesome. And the best part is, spoiler alert... After all that he goes through, he ends up failing the training. And it just makes it, like, even more, like, not emotional, but it makes it more, like, a bit, uh, realistic. Because instead of him fucking winning all the time. But, which was a nice change of pace. But, sorry for ranting, guys. I just really, really, really love this movie. Um, one more thing I gotta say is the villain in this movie, I actually... I wasn't thinking of who the villain... Well, in a way, Snake Eyes is kind of a villain, but... the I can't remember the villain's name, but whoever steals, like, the... Looks like a freaking big Infinity Stone. I thought the guy who played him, that actor fucking killed it. And the girl who plays in the original G.I. Joe, you guys know who I'm talking about. The big, thick girl with the glasses. She's in this. I'm not sure if it's the same actor. I think it is, but I'm not too sure. But you guys can honestly skip Rise of Cobra. Skip fucking Annihilation with The Rock and Bruce Willis. To me, that interpretation of Snake Eyes in those movies was good. I get Snake Eyes doesn't talk, but you can't make an origin movie and not have the guy talk. Like, we had to make him talk. And they gave him character, and I like it. Me, myself, I didn't grow up with the G.I. Joe comics. I grew up, like, I watched the cartoons sometimes, but not, like, I wasn't, like, a huge fan. And I know Snake Eyes doesn't talk, but I'm just happy that they kind of put a little spin on it. Because, come on, guys, like, you can only keep him mute for so long, and it kind of just gets boring. Like, even when I was watching the second G.I. Joe movie, it was, like, Storm Shadow was always talking to him. And Snake Eyes just, like, didn't say any ba anything back. Like, there's no banter or anything. Like, it's just boring. Here, they make him talk, and they give him character, which just makes him more likable. I can only watch Snake Eyes go around and killing people so many times 
be mute. Like, it just gets boring after a while. If you don't have character, it makes the character boring. And I like that they did this because it keeps it fresh. And now when I think of Snake Eyes, this is what I think of because I fucking love this movie. So thank you guys, everyone, for watching. There will be a review tonight. It will be a surprise. I'm not going to tell you. It's a movie that came out a couple years ago, but uh, fuck it. I'm reviewing Gone Girl tonight.